Where did you get that fish? Uh, I caught it out at Clear Lake. Ew, gross. That will kill you in one bite because of the mercury. That statement, not entirely accurate. Let's talk about it today, and please, watch this all the way through before you take a bite out of some random fish. Hi, my name is Cheyenne Blue, and I'm a real estate agent in Lake County, California, and I'm a true local. I created this series to further educate people on Lake County in general, and, you know, everything from just historical events that have happened to things that may be going on now to the animals, you know, there's just so much to this area that so many people don't know about, and I wanted to really bring more than what there is available currently um, to educate people. Now, I do the footwork of researching accredited studies and, you know, government websites and things like that. Um, websites such as the college sites and the health organizations and all that kind of stuff. And I'm going to be citing everything that I use to make this video below. So that way, if there's anything that you might be questioning me on, Go ahead and click on the links and see what they say as well. Today, we're going to talk about the fish in Clear Lake. Obviously, this isn't a fish in Clear Lake. This is my cat's toy, which is probably deadlier to me than the fish in Clear Lake, because if they find out I have this, they're going to be mad. So, what fish? What do we have in Clear Lake? And more importantly, what can we and can't we eat? First off, let's talk about the fish themselves. We have native and non-native species inhabiting our lake. I mainly want to talk about the native species in the lake since there's really not a whole lot on those species. I mean, a lot of the other more popular fish that were introduced into the lake, there's a lot more information out there about them and everything, but I really wanted to specifically make this about the native species to the lake. I will briefly go over the non-native species as well. That will more so be a list of all the non-native species and I will supply pictures as well of what they all are. Then at the end, we'll go over what we can and can't eat in the lake. So without any further ado, let's get into it. Let's start with the California roach. No, we're not talking about the bug or the medicinal kind, but there's actually a fish called the California roach. It's a small chunky fish that measures about 100 millimeters in length. They're characterized by a large head, downturned mouth. Their bodies are typically gray with blue on top and a silvery underside. These fish are highly adaptable and found in various habitats, from coastal streams to bodies of water in the mountains. These fish are omnivorous, mainly feeding on algae and supplementing their diet with crustaceans and insects. Next, we got the Clear Lake Hitch. These guys are endangered, but they're hanging on. They have a long, skinny body, and they may exceed 35 centimeters in length. As you can see, their scales are large in comparison with its body, with a small head and an upturned mouth like it's smiling. Full-grown hitch typically have a brownish-yellow back that gets darker with age. Young hitch are silvery. They're most often found in warm waters, including lakes and quiet stretches of rivers. Though they've been found in cooler streams as well, but not as often. Their diet consists of zooplankton, crustaceans, and various forms of insects. The female can lay anywhere between 3,000 and 63,000 eggs, depending on the size of the female, of course. That's a lot of eggs for a tiny fish. Next, we got the Clear Lake Thule Perch. Clear Lake Thule Perch are typically 15 centimeters to 22 centimeters in length, with the 22 being the maximum. They have a small mouth and a hump that separates the head from the dorsal fin. Their colors are contrasting with tones of blue to purple and white to yellow. Mm -hmm. Their patterns vary as well. Tule perch are more often found in low elevation lakes and streams. They typically require cool, well oxygenated water. Found around the tules, which is why they're called tule perch, in areas where the lake floor is made up of gravel and sand. They feed on invertebrates, plants, and zooplankton, mainly by swimming along the bottom. Next on our list is prickly sculpin. Personally, I think these guys look really cool. Their maximum size in California is about 20 centimeters, and yes, they can be found in other areas as well. They are typically a reddish brown to a dark brown with a white to yellowish underside. The fins are often barred, and the dorsal fin may have a spot on the side that's closest to the tail. The prickly sculpin are environmentally adaptable, ranging from 
salty waters to fresh water, cool streams to large bodies of water and lakes. The limitation to these fish is kind of interesting if you think about it, because the limitation for them is the water quality itself. These fish do not exist, get this, they do not exist in polluted waters. These fish typically aren't very active during the day, but they are active at night when they feed. Their feeding patterns vary drastically depending on what area they are in. Though they will typically chow down on amphipods as both juveniles and adults. When they get older, they prey on small fish and frogs. Next we got rainbow trout and steelhead. A lot of you have probably heard of this fish. It's pretty common around California. They are typically 35 to 65 centimeters in length and range between 3 and 12 pounds. Rainbow trout have silvery bodies with spots and a pinkish lateral band. They have a large mouth with teeth on both the upper and lower jaws. The steelhead are very similar to trout, but lighter in color. Rainbow trout feed on zooplankton, invertebrates, insects, drifting organisms, and sometimes other fish. Feeding usually peaks at dawn and dusk, and summer consumption is much more than winter. Next we got the Sacramento blackfish. The next few fish I'm going to talk about all have Sacramento in the name. For those of you that are going to ask, how is this a native species when the name says Sacramento? Clear Lake drains into the Sacramento River, so the two are connected. So basically, a lot of the fish that you find in the Sacramento River, you're also going to find in Clear Lake. We'll provide a link below explaining that as well. So, the Sacramento blackfish. They have a round, elongated body with a cone-shaped head. A sloping forehead, small eyes, and tiny scales. Adults are light to dark gray with an olive sheen and progressively get darker with size. Young fish are more of a silvery color. These fish typically don't get any bigger than 50 centimeters. The Sacramento blackfish are native to both the Sacramento River, the San Joaquin, and of course, beautiful Clear Lake. These fish are also found in streams and reservoirs around California and even in parts of Nevada. Sacramento blackfish prefer warm cloudy waters and small to large streams and share the habitat with an array of non-native fish. They have shown a great ability to adapt to extreme environments, including surviving water temperatures up to 86 degrees Fahrenheit. Blackfish are suspension feeders and like to eat on platonic algae and zooplankton. Young fish prefer to feed on the stream bottom and in the water column on zooplankton and insects. Sacramento perch are deep bodied and thin. These guys get up to about 61 centimeters in length and have tons of teeth present on their jaws, their tongue, and on the roof of their mouth. You can identify them by their brown sides and back with a green to purple sheen. They have a white underbelly and bars on the sides of them, with spiny fins along the back and on their belly. Sacramento perch were historically abundant predators and existed within California's Central Valley in sloughs, lakes, and slow-moving waters. Today they are rare in their native waters, but still exist in Clear Lake and Alameda Creek. Sacramento perch are opportunistic feeders, which means they will feast all day, with their peak times being at dawn and dusk. Their diet is typically more diverse in the summer as opposed to the winter. The kind of things that they feed on depend on what stage in life that they're in. The first year perch primarily feed on small crustaceans. Juveniles after their first year tend to feast more on copepods and uh, insect larvae also becomes a large part of their diet. Now as these fish mature into adulthood, then they feed on smaller fish, which unfortunately also include the baby perch themselves. So they're little cannibals. The Sacramento pike minnow. Now, as you can see, these are some weird looking dudes. They are big, elongated fish that reach a maximum of 115 centimeters and 2.2 pounds. They have a flattened head, large mouth, and deeply forked tail. Larger adults are a darker brown to an olive coloration with a yellow goldish underside. Younger Sacramento pike minnow are more of a silver color with a dark spot towards the base of the tail. They were formerly known as squawfish and are typically found in clear, low to mid elevation streams and rivers. When found in larger, warmer waters, they tend to grow bigger and faster than those found in the smaller, cooler bodies of water. 
Younger fish forage intermittently during the day while the older fish usually are more dormant during the day and then they actually feed around dawn and dusk. The young fish eat insects in the beginning and then slowly start eating crustaceans. Large adults will pretty much eat anything that's in the lake, including small rodents. And they can live up to 16 years! They're really kind of interesting little guys, aren't they? Now onto the Sacramento sucker. I swear these guys are not related to the Kardashians with them big lips, okay? Yes, they are called the Sacramento sucker. It's an unfortunate name, I know. And their looks also aren't the most fortunate either. They grow up to 56 centimeters in length and are characterized by these big fleshy lips like they've had too much lip filler or something. They come in colors of green to a brownish black with a yellow gold to white underside. When spawning, they may develop red stripes on their sides. And the juveniles are typically a gray color with dark spots. Sacramento suckers are capable of thriving in the most diverse conditions from streams to lakes. Most are found in clear, cool streams and lakes at moderate elevations. These guys often share their habitat with pike minnow, roach, and hardhead. Seriously, who is coming up with the names for these fish? Poor things. Their diet consists of mainly algae and invertebrates. Now we're on to our final native fish that is still alive today, the three-spined stickleback. These little fish are typically three to five centimeters long and get up to about eight centimeters long. Their body is laterally compressed with three sharp spines in front of the dorsal fin and bony armor-like plates along their sides. Adults are olive to dark green with a white belly and colorless fins. Breeding males usually have a red belly, blue sides, and blue to green iridescent eyes. Breeding females usually have a silver underside with a green-brown back and are typically larger in size. They have a really unique characteristic where they change based on where they're at and it doesn't just mean like, you know, Clear Lake versus you know, wherever else, they can be in one area and there be many variants of this fish. One of those variants being that depending on how many predators are in the area will change how much armor is on their body. Isn't that cool? That's all for the native fish that are still living in Clear Lake today. And I did want to briefly go over the native fish that are said to be extinct and you know, it really sucks when we do lose creatures and everything like that, but I know it's just, it's part of the cycle of life, because, I mean, there's been so many different creatures with evolution and everything. It happens, but these are some of the fish that aren't around anymore. The Clear Lake split tail, the hardhead, or maybe they evolved into uh, people, just saying, Pacific lamprey, and the thick tail chub. Seriously, who names these fish? Now onto the non-native species that were likely introduced by humans, and I'm just going to go over the list of non-native species on these guys because there's a lot of them and there's a lot more information. But if you guys would like for me to do something on each individual creature, just let me know. I'll do it. Probably won't be anytime soon, but I will do it. Here's the list. We got the black crappie, bluegill, the brown bullhead, brown trout, common carp, channel catfish, fathead minnow, Florida black crappie, the Florida largemouth bass, golden shiner, goldfish, green sunfish, Mississippi riverside, northern largemouth bass, pumpkin seed, pumpkin seed, that's a fish, red ear sunfish, threadfish shad, western mosquito fish, white catfish, and white crappie. That's a lot of different types of fish. Now for the reason you clicked on this video. Can you eat any of these fish? Actually you can according to the Lake County Health Department. They have a chart on their website that shows you what kind of fish you can eat and how much of those you can eat in a week. I'll actually put that up here now. As you can see, women 18 to 45 years and children 1 to 17 years can have three servings a week of inland silverside, threadfin shad, Asian clam, and winged floater mussel. Because these fish are low on the mercury meter, that is what gives them these guidelines. And this is also around the same recommended servings as lobster, anchovy, and light can tuna. Now next you have your one serving a week fishes. You got the blackfish, bluegill, or other sunfish, bullhead, carp, catfish, 
crappie, crayfish, hitch, mosquito fish, though I don't know why you'd want to eat a mosquito fish, that's kind of weird, and the prickly sculpin. These fish are in the middle for their mercury averages, which is around the same as halibut, snapper, and yellowfin tuna. Lastly, as you can see that the health department suggests to avoid is bass, which is the same ranking as shark, swordfish, and big-eyed tuna. I remember there was this one motivational guru where he actually got mercury poisoning because he was a huge fan of swordfish and shark, and he ended up in the hospital for eating too much. But, I mean, he literally would eat the stuff day after day after day, and he ended up in the hospital with that. So definitely be careful and pay attention to the serving sizes. If you have any further questions on this subject, feel free to reach out to the county's fish and game department or the health department. I'm in no way a scientist and I don't study fish for a living. This is just all information that I found on the government sites and, you know, the FDA site, the health guide through um, our county's local health department. All the information is there, but I still want to bring it to you guys because I know sometimes it's easier to hear somebody talk about it than it is to really go find it and read it. I really hope that this brought some value to you and maybe you learned something different that you didn't know about. I know this one was all about fish, but this was a recommendation by one of the viewers and I really wanted to do it myself just because I was curious on what we could and couldn't eat in the lake. It's really amazing the abundance of life that exists in our lake and I really hope that we can all work together to help preserve this life. I know sometimes species don't always last forever, but I feel like we can really do our part to keep the ones that are here, here, for as long as we can. My name is Cheyenne Blue again. I really hope you enjoyed my video and I will see you next time.